More than 300,000 people in Morocco have been affected by the earthquake a week ago. That's according to the United Nations. Nearly 3,000 people were killed and clean-up operations are still underway. Villages and towns in the High Atlas Mountains are among the hardest hit. Hashem Mahalbada reports from Wergan, south of Marrakesh, where the aid effort is ramping up. This is the airfield that has been used by the gendarmerie over the last few days. It's been the focal point of the emergency response operation that has been going non-stop since the aftermath of the earthquake. This helicopter is going to take us. We're going to fly with this crew all the way to some areas. And this is the pilot, which is going to give us some uh, few details about what is going to happen. Uh, good morning, good to see you, good to talk to you. Can you give us a sense of what is happening? Our mission is uh, transporting uh, generators and a medical uh, team uh, on this helicopter, a super puma of uh, Royal Gendarmerie. We will uh, take off from Wirgan and we will uh, fly over the whole devastated area uh, to the village, which is uh, very remote. And we will be on board with you. Thank you very much, indeed, Fatima Zahra. This is the operation uh, center. A top gendarmerie general is over here. That These are the generators which are going to be taken over to the affected area. Syria, the biggest challenge which is going to be over the upcoming days is the weather. And this explains why, we, because when we were driving to this airfield, it was basically the biggest challenge was basically the need to deliver more and more aid to the affected areas because with the makeshift camps, with all uh, the installations put into place, you have to brace yourself for what could be a prolonged cold weather in the upcoming days. There are medical teams over here ready to fly over the area. And this is, you can see behind me, uh, more uh, helicopters which are going to be part of the airfield which continues all the way. Below you can see the town of Wergan where we were reporting live over the last few days, dotted with tents, makeshift uh, camps all the way. And the ravine which serpentines its way through the mountains is where you have the most affected areas uh, uh, in the Atlas Mountains. Let's bring in another one of our correspondents, Stephanie Decker. She's joining us live from Adduz in the Atlas Mountains, and that is one of the hardest hit areas. Stephanie, I know that you've been watching villagers go through the rubble of their homes by hand. What do these people do now? Well, that's the big question. I think we all know the feeling of going through our front doors and feeling wherever we've come from, finally safe. You close that front door and you're at home. Well, this is... Uh, what's left uh, of at least one home here. Many of them have been pulverized, nothing remains at all. Uh, you did say we're in the village of Adouz. The first village we came to about a week ago was in Mintala, which is across the way. Um, you see how the mountain there just gave way. Um, the entire village is destroyed. At that time, we couldn't get to where we are now because, um, because of the roads, a lot of heavy rock fall from um, from the earthquake that really disturbed the mountain. We're gonna just take you a small walk to give you a sense of what's happened to people's lives here. Electricity cables hanging low. Um, it's complete rubble. And yes, uh, you mentioned there, we've been seeing some villagers come back, um, going through time, picking up items. Ray, we're just gonna take you through here. I apologize for that bad connection with our correspondent Stephanie Decker. She is in the Atlas Mountains. Let's go to her report. We've come to a uh, different location today. This is the town of uh, Moulay Brahim. It is easier to get to. There's more infrastructure around here. Very much also um, a tourist place where tourists come. We're trying to figure out what the situation is like here. We bumped into this uh, gentleman, David. You, you see the minaret? Uh, yes. He lives largely here. Okay, we're going to uh, see a friend of his who was with him. David was here the night of the earthquake on Friday night. And he says he hasn't heard from his friend. He's not answering his phone. So this town is uh, much more established than the other very remote villages we've been to. But the structure here also, on a very large scale, how much of the town has been damaged? They say about uh, maybe 
you more than 50 percent completely destroyed you can see it's minaret in cracks and again here just goes to show again the challenge of um bringing heavy equipment into these areas removing all this and rebuilding uh, that is the main challenge really everywhere yeah we'll go this way in fine his friend is home and fine next time answer your phone he tells him don't make me worry we've been traveling through the mountains this past week through villages more remote less remote and everything we see raises the question just how difficult it's going to be to access these places clear it and then rebuild assalamu alaikum how are you coping we ask this is god's will he says we have to accept it thank god we survived this man tells us we have enough aid the coming winter is the problem as the whole village is sleeping outside i ask him what it's like to see his village in this state I cannot express this. For me, it's a catastrophe. Stephanie Decker, Al Jazeera, Moulay Ibrahim in Morocco's Atlas Mountains. Well, let's try reconnecting to Stephanie once again. She is live in Adouz in the Atlas Mountains. And Stephanie, you were earlier walking us through the destruction of just one of the villages there. Yes, we were trying to show you, but our, our connection is not working here. It is very remote here because we want to show you what's happened to people's lives. You have an elderly gentleman. We're trying not to move too much, not to lose the signal again, who's just come and sit and look to, at, at what used to be his life. And I think also we need to remember the Amazigh people who live in these mountains for generations, living off the mountains, living off the land. Um, I think there's a big question now to all these remote communities that have lived. There is some tourism in these areas, of course, but they live a very traditional way of life. And now um, some of these places, they're not going to rebuild here. It's already clear that this is not going to be possible. People, entire villages, entire communities are going to be moved away somewhere else. Um, but even that is going to take time. And right now, the immediate challenge is what we keep saying, but it is so true is how are you going to clean this up, uh, remove the rubble, and then either rebuild or remove the, uh, move the communities to another place. It is a massive undertaking. Stephanie, thank you very much for that. That's Stephanie Decker joining us live from Adus in the Atlas Mountains.